So guys, we are here at the Hardin Trotter. Today we're gonna to be showing you guys how to take apart an entire pig or half a pig. As long as you guys know how to do one side, you should be good on the other side since the pig is exactly the same right down the middle. There you go. Now that I cut through the vertebrae, um, I'm gonna to start to cut individual ch chops off. Let me see. So what I'm doing is just getting through the skin. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, so that's chop number one. And something that's also super important, guys, when cutting these up, like taking these from like your grocery shop butcher to like, you know, somebody that's a pro that's been doing it for quite some time, you know, it's getting evenly thick cut size steaks, you know? One's bigger than the other, one's like this, the other side's like that. It makes them harder to cook because they're uneven. So the side will probably cook faster than the other one and you'll have like an uneven cook throughout the chop. So you want to get like a perfect cut like this. Yeah, so um, whenever you're trying to like pick them out uh, in like a butcher shop or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then it'll even out a little, it'll even out a lot more once we actually take the skin off. That's what's like kind of holding it up. That's what you um, right there. Yeah. I know that. I was um. born with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably born and then right after like a, like a bag of chicharron came out and they were like, oh, there you go. <laughs> we got all the chops lined up here. You can see like the fat content on each, like the marbling changes like quite a bit. You can see it's like super nice there. And as it goes along, you'll start seeing that it gets leaner and leaner and leaner. Like these ones, it, it's pretty lean by here. You can see all the marbling right here. It's like super nice. And over here, nothing. It's it's almost not present, huh? It's kind of crazy. Yeah. These are these are your ribeyes. And well, I guess these are all your ribeyes. These yeah. are gonna be your like your New Yorks. I I prefer a ribeye because I think it's more tender. Yeah. Um, and then it gets a little leaner and a little more tough um, yeah. once you actually get to the loin section. So same thing. I was just discussing this uh, yesterday with my with my girlfriend. Um, she said, "Do you prefer the ribeye or do you prefer the New York steak?" And I was and I was thinking about it, and I was like, "I like the ribeye every now and then. It's like maybe every weekend, like uh, every weekend, I'll have a good like reverse here, you know, kind of thing. Like it doesn't matter, inch and a half. Like I'll eat the entire thing until I pass out, kind of steak. But for every day." I could eat a New York steak every day. Yeah. Like it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely just um, there's ribeye people and New York people. Yeah. yeah. So what is that called right there? What you so got? this is a bone scraper. So anytime when you saw through the bone, there's going to be bone dust, basically sawdust. And so this thing is the device that takes all that stuff off and makes everything look nice and pretty. Uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely want to take that off. <laughs> Great. So... We're gonna be peeling off that fat cap, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see how it's going down that little line, yeah. It's definitely yep. following the entire thing. And then... That's the outcome. That's your ribeye. And all that's gonna be poured towards sausage, correct? Yeah, so we'll just take all this off. And so I usually go about two or three inches in. Just go down to the skin itself and then you just zip through. And so, that you would make a chicharron or something, oh, yeah. whatever you want to do. And then you have the pure fat, the back fat right here, and we'll just dice this up and uh, do that for every single one. Could that be used for cooking as well, that fat? It can. Um, it's got a lower smoking temperature. You wouldn't want to cook with you that as much. You don't want to do, yeah. yeah. Get whatever you're cooking um, in there like as soon as possible. Um, really good for like eggs and stuff like that. Like super, super easy, super quick stuff. You just don't want to do like super high heat for a long time. going to do now is cut uh, we're going to cut porter houses so this is the loin section the center cut loin section and then you have the uh, the tenderloin right here and so what I want to do I'm going to have to cut through the bone section with the saw 
but I want to make sure that the tenderloin is intact through every single part. Oh, so you, um, you so make like a little guide first. For yeah, so we don't oh. so we don't shred the the tenderloin. You don't want to do that. Dressing it is a lot different from actual like retail because you're really just trying to figure out like the best way to get it out of the woods as quick as possible. As compared to this, you're really looking at yield and so out there you're just like, all right, I need to do this as soon as possible and get it in the fridge. Here it like, uh, looks like you have all the time in the world to do it versus yeah. out in the field it's like before it spoils, before a bear gets to us, before something is <laughs> yeah. trying to take away or catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's a lot different out there. I learned this in, in Hollywood, butcher shop called Lindy and Grundy. They're unfortunately not around anymore, but I was an apprentice there with the intent to open this shop. Um, yeah, and, so like six, and, six years ago. And like you that. finally made it, man, there you go. <laughs> this is a success story right there. It worked, yeah. <laughs> So you guys start off small and then you, it just grows, it grows, it grows. Yeah, we're trying. You just gotta put your back into it or your saw into it and that <laughs> usually works, I guess. Just cut it open. So what we have here is pork butt, which is actually pork shoulder. You have the picnic, the uh, ham hock, and the trotter. Right underneath the spine here, we're gonna separate the pork butt from the pork picnic. We do it two different ways. Um, so we have to go through these ribs up here in the front section um, at an angle. So I kind of hang it off. So once I get through that, once we go Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I go all the way down and you'll actually hit like this shoulder bone. <clears throat> we want to cut through that again with the uh... Oh that's your guy that you yeah. Scrape everything off again. Scrape everything off, because there's a good amount of cutting there. So this is the pork butt. We're actually gonna take this exterior, the feather bones, a little bit excess of the rib section, and then the neck bones uh, right there. Um, so we're gonna cut right up under the um, first five ribs. Just follow the contour. And then on this side, go right underneath the feather bones, all the way around. And then you hit the neck bone area right there. And so what I do is just go around each one of those. And then you hit the atlas bone, which holds the skull on the spine. Oh, okay. Let's see how it's... And all those are just oh, no. bone, excess bones, kind of? Yeah, and so we'll take all these, typically, and then just make bone broth out of it. Or like a ramen broth. Excess fat and all that stuff, you can, uh, you can totally render it down. Um, render it down, yeah, just throw it in there. <laughs> okay, so that is the piece of bone. That's just excess bone for whatever you need bone for. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> So this is still bone in, so it has the shoulder blade in it, but if you're going to do any kind of roasts or uh, like carnitas or anything like that, you generally want to keep it in just because you get a lot of flavor out of it. And then I'm just trimming off some of the age on it. And then once you get up closer to the head, or where the head was, you get some glands. That's actually what that is and they're not very tasty. Um, and then that's actually, that's done. 
So that's a whole pork butt. So that's about 15 to 17 pounds. Nice. Um, skin off. So that's why this pork actually looks a lot darker than your regular box store pork. So it just has to do with the way they're raised. It literally all the animal's flavor comes from that. <laughs> yeah. Since you're gonna do pulled pork, we're gonna take off the outside layer of skin. You can also see there's a good amount of fat here, and so we want to go ahead and go in that napo seam. Oh yeah, it's and, still right there. Yep, it's and so crazy. it goes out, it goes through like the entire body. So I'll start to seam that out. So usually I'll just go right along. It reminds me of uh, those um, kindergarten papers where they draw the little scissor lines. Yeah. <laughs> Cut through here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see it all the way. Yeah, all the way down there. Good yeah. yeah, that is pretty And so, we'll start to pull it, and then just open it up. Just follow it again with the guy. Yep. Oh. So what exactly is that back stamp that you see there? Uh, that's USDA. Oh. So, that means that it was inspected by a USDA inspector. And um, and it's good to go for retail sale. Nice. Yeah. So if they give you half a pay, guys, and you don't see that seal, and they said it was USDA, uh, yeah. It's not <laughs> USDA. It's yeah. probably not USDA. All of our stuff goes through USDA. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But there's just so many seals these days that kind of don't mean nothing. Yeah, there's a good amount of them. USDA standards are actually really, really high. It really just depends on how much quantity that they're actually pushing out through that specific slaughterhouse, which things can be missed every once in a while if they're doing like 10,000 animals a day or something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, all the meat starts looking the same after like the 100th cut. Yeah, 100th our... I only use slaughterhouses that they'll literally do anywhere from like 6 to like 20 a day um, as compared to like the big guys, everything you get from like Costco and all that stuff. They're doing 10, 10,000 or something like that. And it's and when you think about it, it's hard to trust whoever is doing that job because yes, like I mean, I yeah, can't. there's only like a certain amount of inspectors, even USDA inspectors. I just had one come in and they inspected us. There's only 123 in America. Oh, um, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> 123 for all the meat that's eaten in America, guys. So, think process process that one. <laughs> Tell the people in the camera what you got going on, where where can we find you? Alright guys, this is the Hard and Trotter Butcher Shop. My name is James, I'm one of the owners. Um, we're in North Park, El Cajon Boulevard, right across the street from Sonic, which is pretty ironic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> These guys probably hate you over here. <laughs> But a uh, whole animal butcher shop, we do everything in-house. Come, we even do sandwiches and beer and wine and all that fun stuff too. So just come by and say hi, see what we have, and we'll go from there. I haven't had any other sandwiches, but once I get off of the carnivore diet, I think I might <laughs> do one, because I've gone through here, I've come to buy some meat or something, and some stuff, or just getting like touch with them, and the smell is amazing. Like they do all their stuff back there, and so it's it's awesome. Yeah, we got a full kitchen. Uh, <laughs> do all of our own broths, all of our own deli meats, all of uh, everything. So yeah, come on by and check it out. Come by, check it out, guys. Over here in San Diego, North Park.